everybody happy that you're in the house of the Lord this morning? There's no better place you could ask to be than in the house of the Lord where anything can happen. Sometimes I wonder why some services are better than others. It seems like any time you have a revival service or a special speaker, people are excited and people are ready for something to happen. It always seems like there's a good service and it comes down to expectancy. Too many times we just think, well, it's just another Sunday. We're used to this. We get here at 11, we sing our songs, we hear our song, and we go home. We show up with nothing expected of God. But what if just for a minute we got our minds in the right place, understanding that anything really could happen this morning. It's not just an ordinary Sunday. This is a Sunday where we are here, we are gathered together, and God can move in every situation, every need, anything that needs to be done this morning. God can do it before you leave. Amen. Why don't you lift your hands and let's start this service the right way. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the opportunity to be here in your presence. Among your people, God, God, we're here expecting something, God. It's not just a normal service, God. We're coming with an expectancy this morning that you can and will do whatever it is you set out to do. God, we ask that you move, God, from the first word that is sung to the end of the service, God. Let your spirit and your presence be felt from the front of the building to the back. God, make hearts mended, God. Anyone who came in broken, God, let them leave whole. God, anyone who has a need, let it be met. God, anyone who needs the Holy Ghost, God, let them get it this morning before they leave. God, we're trusting you and we're believing that you are God, that you say you are. God, we know you can do anything. And we are coming this morning with an expectancy that the miraculous will be done. We love you and we thank you in advance for what you're going to do in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Why don't you lift your hands and worship with us this morning? You'll never leave me. You said that you won't forsake me. And you're right beside me. And that is all that matters. You'll never leave me. You said that you won't forsake me. But you're right beside me. And that is all that matters. You are the covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. And you'll never leave me. You said that you won't forsake me. And you're right beside me. And that is all that matters. You'll never leave me. You said that you won't forsake me. And you're right beside me. And that is all that matters. And yes, you are. You are the covenant keeping God. His Lord, you are. You are. Coming in keeping God. Yahweh, the coming in keeping God. Yahweh, the coming in keeping God. And you'll never leave me. You said that you won't forsake me. You're right beside me. And that is all that matters. You'll never leave me. You said that you won't forsake me. You're right beside me. And that is all that matters. Lord, you are the covenant keeping God. You are. 
That you won't forsake me, that you're right beside me, and that is all that matters. Or you'll never leave me. You said that you won't forsake me. You're right beside me, and that is all that matters. Sing without the music this morning, church. You'll never leave me. You said that you won't forsake me. You're right beside me, and that is all that matters. You'll never leave me. You'll never leave me. You said that you won't forsake me. You're right beside me, and that is all that matters.
If you need something from the Lord, this is your moment right now. Because the Lord is moving in this place. And I would just encourage you, if you have a need, if you want the Lord to touch you in a special way, if you got an area of your life that you need God to step into today, today, I'm going to encourage you, I'm going to challenge you to step out in your aisle right now, wherever you are. You got something you need prayer about. Go ahead and just step out in your aisle. Oh, hallelujah. 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 That's it. Come on. Look around. There's people stepping out all over this room right now. Church family, I want you to just allow the Lord to lead you to somebody right now to pray with. Because we are going to pray for the needs that are represented in this room right now. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, would you lift your hands and your voices all across the sanctuary. And let's pray together. Lord Jesus, today, Lord, you see every need represented in this house this morning. God, every physical need, every spiritual need. Lord, you see, God, every area of our life, Lord Jesus, where we need a divine intervention. And God, today, Lord, these people have made themselves available, Lord, to be prayed for, Lord, for the ministry to lay their hands on them. Lord, and we take authority and dominion right now in every every situation, oh God, in every vexation of spirit, in every stubborn circumstance, in the name of Jesus, and we declare a release of your miracle working power, Lord, to move on our behalf today, Lord, that there would be healing, Lord, that there would be 
breakthrough. Lord, that there would be provision. Lord, in the name of Jesus, that every stubborn mountain that has refused to move will begin to move today. In the name of Jesus, we speak victory. In the name of Jesus, we speak breakthrough today. In Jesus' name. Come on, that's it, church. That's it, church. God is moving in this house today. Come on, you don't have to leave here the same way that you showed up. Hallelujah. Come on, there's healing here. There's healing for your mind. There's healing for your family. There's healing for your marriage. There's healing for your body. Come on, the ministry of the Holy Ghost is moving all over this room right now. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be unto your name, Jesus. Glory be unto your name, Jesus. Ah, do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. He kind of rose up under my heart. He cut a ramash under my heart. Come on, church. I want you to pray just a little longer. There's some people getting breakthroughs that they've needed for a long time this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. How many of you are thankful to be part of a spirit-filled church? Come on, how many of you are thankful to be in a place where the ministry of the Word and the Spirit have liberty every single time we are gathered together? Praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen. Doesn't it feel good in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Brother Jerry, if you would come. I've asked Brother Jerry to lead us this morning in the receiving of our tithes and offerings. Praise the Lord, church. I tell you, prayer breaks things. Amen. Amen. Obedience breaks things. Amen. Just obey the word of the Lord. You feel an unction to come up, you go up. Always the one you do is take a step. That's all. Just one step. One step towards Him. And He can change things in you. Hallelujah. We're going to try to change the order of the service this morning, and we're going to receive our Sunday morning tithes and offerings. This is still a part of worship this morning, amen? We worship our Lord with our first fruits, amen? We bring forth what He has blessed us with. And he doesn't want us to be selfish and stingy. He wants us to be just like Him, amen? He allows us to have, and then He allows us to share, amen? He's the creator of all things. And we're going to give you an opportunity to share what you have through your offerings. And we're going to have, ask, we're going to have you also... Bring forth your tithes and offerings, amen, back to God. I, I tell you what, I've been in this for a good while, and it's when God gets your pocket. I heard, I heard my first pastor say this. When God gets your pocket, when he gets your wallet, he's got you, amen? Amen, and that's truth today. You want to know where your heart is, you follow the money trail, amen? See what you're spending it all on today. If you're not sowing into the kingdom of God, maybe that's why you're reaping things. Maybe you're, maybe you're sowing crab apples today. Maybe that's why you're getting crab apples. Amen? we got to sow the good things. Hallelujah. To get good things. And we got to be patient. Sow in water. Be patient and let God be God and He will bless you. There's many ways to give here. With Our baskets are out this morning. We will receive cash. We'll receive checks. We'll receive... We've got a QR code on the board. You can use it. If you're online, you can go to our... Go to our online website. Many, many ways. We don't want to hinder nobody from being, for not getting their blessing from God by obeying His word today. Amen. 
So we want to cho- we want you to choose how you want to sow your seed today. Our biggest thing is to encourage you. Do not cheat yourself. Man, we do that all the time. I've done that all I've done that a lot to myself. We cheat ourselves by holding on to our treasures and not sowing them. God loves you today. He's given you something for a reason. What are you going to do with it today? Amen. So we're going to we're going to open up this this morning. Before we do, we're going to ask God to bless it this morning, and then we're going to give you an opportunity to stand and, and bring your joy, your joyful gift to God. Amen. Let's pray over this offering together as a body of believers. Precious Father, we come before you right now in the wonderful name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to have something first of all to be able to bring back to you. God, that you've entrusted us with with finances, Lord, and we're grateful and thankful that you allow us to have our own mind about what we do. God, you give us instructions in how we should do and how we shouldn't do. And God, I'm glad that you're showing us the right way to do things. And God, that you're allowing us to walk in this word, in this word of faith. Father, I ask that you bless the tithe and the offering today. Bless both gift and giver. And God, if they're here today and they don't think they have it today, I ask you, Lord, to open their eyes, to show them what they got, God. Increase their faith and help them to sow the good seed of faith. And Lord, I know that you are gracious and generous, God, and that you'll bless them abundantly. Father, we ask this all in the powerful name of Jesus. Why don't you shout it? Amen. If you're able to, we've got... Today, we're, we're trying to get our mindset changed. It's a hard thing because we're creatures of habit, aren't we? This church is about to bust open and grow so big, it's going to get congested. Amen? So what we're going to do, we're going to ask you to go out your left side, which will probably be my right. But we're going to have you go out one way, go around, drop off your offering or your, your tithe to the Lord, and then go back the other way. And we're just going to allow you to start on this side and then this and then this. On your mark, get ready, go. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Thank you all so much for giving today. I have just a, a few quick announcements for you. Um, first of all, I would like to welcome Brother and Sister Blake here today. They are here to help us with the music. Amen. While well, Brother Hammond is out of town, so honored that they would be here and gather with us. Uh, so thankful for their ministry. Love and appreciate them so much. Uh, how many of you have seen our summer calendar? All right. A lot of you, not all of you. Uh, our summer calendar is now posted online on all of our social media platforms. Uh, if you would like to receive that digitally through email uh, or a hard copy, just give me or my wife and we can hook you up with that. Um, today... In the Sunday school here, just a few minutes after we sing our next song, we'll dismiss the Sunday school. And uh, Sister Azalini will be down there uh, heading up Sunday school for the summer. So I'm excited about that. So if you have children here today, we do have Sunday school for you. Uh, Downstairs, you'll go right through these double doors here and then turn right and right down those stairs. We have Sunday school for all of our children up to age 12. Who had an opportunity to be here Thursday night? Raise your hand. Awesome. Listen, if you, I know there was, it it was short and we just got here and now all of a sudden we have a calendar and all this stuff. And, but Thursday night we had our first all church prayer meeting. 
and it was powerful. It was powerful. God moved in such a mighty way here on Thursday night, and if you want to avail yourself of that and be a part of that, uh, we will be having all church prayer on the first Thursday of every month. On the first Thursday of every month at 7 o'clock, right here in the sanctuary, we'll gather together and pray. And I got another exciting announcement for you. On Friday night, Brother Brandon received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. At the Section 4 Holy Ghost Rally in Athens, Ohio. Amen. And we are so excited, delighted, and rejoicing with you, Brother Brandon. We love you. And also, this church prayed for him a few weeks ago. He's been suffering with Lyme disease, and he is starting to feel better. And I told him today, and I'll say it in all of your hearing, that God is going to completely heal him of Lyme disease. Amen. It will be a notable miracle in this church because he will be tested for Lyme disease again at some point, And that test will come back negative, And we will have evidence that God has performed a notable miracle miracle in his life. So thankful for that. Amen. Also, if you were here a few weeks ago, we launched our faith team signups. If you have not had an opportunity to do that, we're going to have those out just for a couple more services. And we've relocated those downstairs in the welcome area of the Sunday school. Uh, there's a couple tables down there. And if you want to get involved here at Greater Faith, you can go down there and sign up after service. Uh, they're down there on the tables. All the qualifications and descriptions are on each individual sign-up sheet. So please avail yourself of that and give of yourself because we need you. We need your help because God is taking this church places and it's going to take all of us to be involved. Amen? Amen. Would you stand with me? Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm so excited to be in the house of the Lord today. So excited. Excited about what God is doing and excited about what God is getting ready to do. Why don't you just turn to somebody near you right now and greet them. Tell them how glad you are that they are in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Praise God. Amen. How many of you came with expectation today? Praise God. How many of you are ready to worship together? We got one more song before the preaching and Sunday school. I want you to just lift your hands all over this room. And I want you to begin to lift your voice right now and just build an atmosphere of faith and expectation in this room. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. We love you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus.
Jesus Christ is Lord forever. Yes, every knee will bow. Every knee will bow. Every tongue confess. Jesus Christ is Lord forever. Who only lift up your voice and see for the door. Clap your hands, make a joyful noise. Blow the trumpet and shout. We're praising for the victory. The only weapons we use are our bombs and guns. This is the way that the battle is won. This is the way that we fight. We're praising for the victory. I can't stop praising His name. I just can't stop praising His name. I just can't stop praising His name. Hallelujah. Come on, can you lift your voice all over this house? 
Come on, would you give him a shout of praise this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, would you let your faith out right now? Glory be unto your name, Jesus. Come on, how many of you feel huh, the words of that song? You just can't stop huh, praising his name. Why? Huh, because he's been too good to me. Huh, he's been so faithful to me. Huh, he's been tried and true. Huh, he's been an ever-present help huh, in the time of trouble. Huh, I can't stop praising him. Huh, let everything that hath breath huh, praise the Lord. Huh, praise ye the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, mighty are you, Lord. Mm, come on, if you got the Holy Ghost, you ought to just let that flow right now. Come on, the Lord is moving on some hearts and in some lives in this room right now. Come on, he's setting us up for a victory. He's setting us up for a victory right now. Hey! Hey, for those of you who are thinking, man, why do I got to shout? Why do I got to lift my voice? Aren't you just a little bit too emotional? Let me tell you something, friend. When you lift your voice and you shout, you elevate your faith above your issue, above the challenge, and above the problem. And all of a sudden, you set the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords over whatever you are battling, over whatever you are facing. Honey, it's not just emotion. You're establishing authority. When you lift your voice, you're letting God know, and you're letting your adversary know that God is in charge. God is Lord of my life. He's Lord of my problem, and He's Lord of my promise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I've asked my friend, Brother Marcus, to just come and greet you for a moment. This is an apostolic man of faith. If you just remain standing for just a moment, Brother Marcus, would you just come and greet this great congregation? We're so thrilled that you and your wife are here to bless us today. We love you, sir. Oh, come on. Let's clap our hands and praise the Lord. Come on. Pastor already said it. It's something about a spirit-filled church. Come on. The Bible says that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where there's liberty, there means there's no chains of bondage, there's no prison, there's nothing that can hold you down or can bind you from the things of God. Amen. My wife and I are so honored to be here. My son, my daughter, we just got home from vacation yesterday, and uh, as we were getting ready to walk out the door, my daughter texted and said, I'm going to stay here and sleep. I said, okay. And uh, she's been texting me the whole time, so I don't think she's been asleep. But uh, I, I wanted to say uh, how much I give honor to your first family, Pastor and Sister Azzalini. If there's anything I could say about him, he is the real deal. He's truly apostolic. And uh, you can feel the glory of God in this house. We've gone past the presence and we're into the glory now. And the glory is where change comes. The glory is where your miracle comes. The glory is where your mindset changes and your spirit moves. And so, again, it's an honor to be here today, but it's an honor to be in the house of God and to be with like-minded folks. And we love you. We care for you. We're just across the water uh, in Ashland. And uh, we give honor to you, Pastor Insolini. I I'm so glad that you're here. And uh, don't, my friend's not a couple hours away anymore. He's close. And uh, so, God bless you. Let's have some church today, amen? Let's have some church. Let's get changed today. Praise God. If you turn in the word of the Lord with me this morning to the book of Haggai, chapter 1. That's a small book, so it's not one of those that's easy to find. You know, you're going to have to either know it, go to the concordance, or wait for it to be on the screen. <laughs> Haggai, chapter 1. And we're going to read verse 2 and verses 4 through 8. While you're turning there, I do want to go ahead and dismiss any Sunday school children uh, that are in here. We do have classes for you downstairs.
praise God. Haggai chapter 1, verse 2 and verses 4 through 8. Is it on the screen? Amen. Beginning with verse 2. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Mm. They had a procrastinating spirit. Mm. Got better things to do. Got bigger priorities. Verse 4. Is it time for you, O ye, is the Lord's response to what they said. Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie waste? having flashbacks of 2020 when the church went home and it became okay to not gather. Is it all right for you to stay in your sealed house and not come together in person? Mm. Now therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much and you bring in little. Anybody ever feel like you're putting in all your effort but your return is not what you hoped it would be. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Anybody ever feel like you just can't make enough money? Feels like every time you thought you were going to get ahead, oh, it's tax return season, and the transmission says, bye-bye. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. He's saying if this is what it's like for you, then you ought to consider your ways. Because it's not supposed to be that way for my people. Go up to the mountain and bring wood. And build the house. And I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, saith the Lord. He takes pleasure in your kingdom investment. When you go downstairs and sign up to be on a faith team, He takes pleasure in that. When you show up here for prayer, He takes pleasure in that. Brother Burton, when you receive tithes and offerings, He takes pleasure in that. And I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Let's pray together. Jesus, we love you. Lord, we're so thankful to be in your house today with your people. Lord, this is your church. This is your city. This is your congregation. Oh, God, today, Lord, release vision in this house today. I take authority and dominion over small-mindedness. Lord God, over a poverty mindset. I take authority and dominion over small vision and small faith. And I declare in the name of Jesus that the scales will fall from our eyes. Lord, and we will see ourselves, the church, Lord, the way you see us today. Greater are they that be with us than those they that be with them. Give us vision today, oh God. In Jesus' name. Everybody say, in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Would you give the Lord a hand clap again as you're seated? Praise God. You may be seated. Two months ago, I didn't even know Ironton existed. Don't be offended. 
I've lived in Ohio my entire life, and I'd never heard of this church. To my knowledge, I'd never driven through this part of Ohio. About a month ago, I read an article online about how Ironton once was a thriving city. Ironton proper, not including South Point and Cold Grove. See, I'm learning. There's another one, Franklin Furnace. Y'all like that furnace word down in this part of Ohio. And other surrounding areas used to boast a population of over 20,000 people just in Ironton proper. I've been your pastor for one month. And over the last month, I've had countless conversations with people all over the state of Ohio recounting the story Telling them of how the Lord called our family to iron. About two months ago, Bishop Stark called me and said, hey, I got a couple meetings today and a whole lot of driving. He said, would you drive me? And I said, absolutely, Pastor, because that's what you do. That's what you do. I had stuff going on, but I didn't say, well, we'll have to reschedule. I got stuff going on. No, I moved the stuff on the schedule. I said, absolutely, Pastor. We got in the car. I said, where are we going? He said, we're going to Ironton. I said, Iron where? I said, you're going to have to put that in the GPS. He said, yeah. He said, there's a church in Ironton. He said, and they, some of the board members or a board member called me and asked me to come down and help them. They're going through a transition. Ooh, man, I feel the Lord so strong in this building. I said, all right. I said, let's go. And two hours and 15 minutes later, we pulled into this city. And I thought, man, they do need a church here. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Don't let offense hinder you today. Because I'm trying to show you something, paint a picture in your mind of how God's going to turn this entire city around. You sat in that room over there, which is now the chapel. And a meeting ensued, one that I felt was above my pay grade. (laughs) Things were being talked about, and I thought, man, well, I'm just the driver. Until the Holy Ghost moved. Ah, You remember that, Brother Went? And God gave me something to say in there, something triggered in my spirit, and I thought, whoa, what's happening here? Mm. We got in the car, and... I, and, and I asked Bishop, I said, who's the pastor? He said, well, they're, they're looking for a pastor. And, and, and just kind of filled me in a little bit of the story. And, and we drove out of town. And <laughs> then Brother Stark called me and said, I got a call from somebody on the board said, they're interested in you. And I said, well, I'm not interested in pastoring, Bishop. <laughs> I said, I'm an evangelist. I'm very happy. I said, but if they need me to just come and minister, I'll be happy to do that. So I said, let them know that I'm available on this Wednesday night. So I came down on a Wednesday night. How many of you were here on that Wednesday night? Does anybody remember what my opening remarks were? Because I do. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. I'm not here to be your pastor. Look at Jesus, that's right. And then something happened that night. I preached the word and God moved and I walked down right over here. And this little group right here. They said, so are you the pastor? 
Are you coming down here to be the pat? Yeah, uh huh. I'm looking at you. Will you be our pat? Will you pray about being our pat? Y'all disarmed me that day. I got in the car, and what you don't know is tears began to come down my face, and I thought, God, I was like, hold on now. I know I said I'd go anywhere and do anything you want me to, but but I thought I was already doing that. Then we went to the restaurant, and they asked, so what do you think? And I said, well, I think we had a great church. And they said, no, what do you think about being pastor? Are you just going to ask me that here at B-Dubs? Yeah. Y'all make it plain, don't you, Dwight? I drove home. I called my wife. I said, I said, baby, they want me to think about coming down here and being the pastor. And she said, well, you're an evangelist. I said, amen. I said, we ain't entertaining that talk. But I gave these men my word that I would pray and fast about it. So I went on a three-day fast. And God didn't give me a go, and he didn't give me a no. He said, go back and minister again. So I called. I think I talked to Brother Dwight, and I said, I feel released to come back and minister again, but God did not speak to me about pastoring. Y'all need to hear this story. I felt very pressed to share this because most of you got questions. So I came back for another Wednesday night, but this time I had a strategy. I said, I'm bringing my wife and children. I said, because when we pull into Ironton, Jennifer's going to let me know that I'm not called to move to Ironton. She's downstairs, but she's a little bit bougie. I'm like, babe, I don't think they got a Starbucks here. Woo. And then the Lord moved in that service. And you all asked the same questions again. You came approached me after church the same way. It disarmed me. And I went to the hotel and I said, babe, what do you feel? Oh, she said, oh, let's talk about it tomorrow. <laughs> and I said, I don't know how to say this. I said, but I feel like God's starting to warm my heart a little bit toward Ironton. I want you to know that I turned down four or five other pastoring opportunities before this opportunity ever opened. And I've never felt a release to go to any of them. I prayed and I fasted three days again. I'm sorry this story's taking so long. And I, I talked to Jennifer again afterwards. And I said, what are you feeling? She said, I just feel like God is dealing with my heart, but I don't feel anything specific. I said, the same exact thing is happening to me. I feel like God continues to open my heart to Ironton, but I don't feel a go and I don't feel a no. So they called and they said, are you available for Easter? You got to understand, as an evangelist, you are Never available for Easter. My Easter's are scheduled years in advance. But this Easter, I schedule myself home because my daughter and her fiance were going to be home for Easter. So I said, let's just take the weekend off and stay home. And so you all called and you didn't ask for me to just come back whenever. You said, can you come back for Easter? I said, my God, have mercy. And so I said, well, I'll get out of this. I'll call Ashley and ask her if she wants to go down to Ironton. She bougie, too. I said, y'all want to go down to Ironton? She said, sure. Said, you ain't helping. You ain't helping. Go pray. So we got the plan together to come down here for Easter morning. And early Easter morning, I was sitting in my office at home, and the Lord moved on me and said, I want you to release your name to run for pastor in Ironton. I called Bishop Stark, and we prayed over the phone, and we both felt good about it in the Holy Ghost. And then on April the 30th, when my phone rang that afternoon, and Brother Wimp, I think, was on the other line. He said, hello, pastor. <laughs> I've been
I've been telling that story over and over and more times than I can count the past month. And in most conversations that I've had with people about Ironton, almost everyone said something like this. I have family in Ironton. I know someone who lives in Ironton. Evidently, everybody in Ohio knew about you but me. He said things like this. That used to be one of the strongest churches in our fellowship. Mm. One man said, I remember when that church was on fire. I heard that church has an amazing story. And this was one of my favorites. I received it in a text message from Pastor Joel Urson in Cincinnati. He said, Ironton, Ohio is rich with apostolic history and is ripe for a great harvest. I believe it. Have you ever met someone that all they do is talk about the glory days? Their favorite thing to talk about is the good old days, how it used to be. That's what it felt like was happening in most of my conversations with people about Ironton and greater faith. They talked about the glory days of this church, the good old days. But friend, I'm done looking backwards. The greatest days of greater faith apostolic church in this region are yet to come. I'm going to tell you right now in the Holy Ghost that this church is going to be talked about again. People will talk about God's glory in this city. People will talk about Ironton being a revival center in the state of Ohio. People will talk about an entire city changing because of the work that God is doing in this region. Proverbs tells us that without a vision, the people perish. You've been spending all your time looking in the rear view mirror. You better pay attention to the warning label. Objects are closer than they appear. Your past will overtake you and you will live your todays in your yesterdays if you don't shift your view forward. Greater faith apostolic church will not perish. This is going to be a church of vision, of destiny, and of promise. Hey! Hallelujah! Sister Burton, I want you to come up here if you would for just a moment. Sister Burton came and shared something with me a couple weeks ago. And when she shared it, I said, would you please write that down? Because at some point, the Holy Ghost is going to prompt me to have you share that with the church. And it had been a few weeks ago. I couldn't remember exactly what it was. And she came to church today. She said, I wrote it down. I said, can I read it again and familiarize myself with it again? And when I read it, I was like, oh, my, today's the day. Come on up here, Sister Burton. You can put that right there, and I want you to read what the Lord gave you, because this is from the Lord. Good morning, Greater Faith. Um, I have a few things I want to share with you, or something that I want to share with you that the Lord has showed me. Have you ever had a dream that when you woke up, you believed it was real? Yeah. Uh, Well, I have been blessed to have many dreams, and I believe even visions. Um, I've had many about the return of backsliders. The church was full, actually overflowing. 
and many of them which was your family. A couple weeks ago here in the church, it was on a Wednesday night, and my hubby was up giving the word, and uh, the Lord had brought this to my mind. And in the book of Proverbs, 29:18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. I said, yes, Lord, that's true. And he said to me, don't let your vision become an optical illusion. Let's keep believing and trusting in God because he's not done yet. We're, this church is going to overflow. Come on, if you receive that, would you just stand to your feet right now? That was a prophetic word for this congregation. Ah, hallelujah. It's going to overflow here in Ironton. And I'll tell you right now, an optical illusion is something that deceives you into thinking that you are seeing what you had hoped to see. But honey, we haven't seen anything yet. Don't you settle for anything you've seen so far. Because God's got greater for this church. Friend of mine, this is and always will be a one God. Jesus' name. Holy Ghost filled, holiness believing, devil stomping, God glorifying, community impacting, miracle believing, life transforming, fivefold ministry church. Greater faith, you will be one of those that turn your world upside down. may be seated. The reason I loved what Pastor Urshan said so much is this. He did not say Ironton, Ohio was rich with apostolic history. He said Ironton, Ohio is rich with apostolic history. He didn't say it was ripe for revival. He said Ironton is ripe for a great harvest right now. Now, no longer will we say we were, but from now on, we are and we will. You know what happens when people lose their vision? Verse told us they perish. And it's not just them. Everything and everyone around them begins to wither also. When we lose our vision, the law of entropy starts to take control. I call it the decay of time. When people don't have a vision to look to, I want you to hear this. Kingdom degradation begins to take place. There is a shift in our greatest investments. Anybody remember what those are? Our time, our treasure, and our talents. We begin to invest our time, our talent, and our treasure into the temporal and into the carnal when we don't have vision. We begin to cultivate, this is powerful, you got to hear this, the Lord gave me this this morning. We begin to cultivate division because of lack of vision. Division is not the same as disunity. I can come to the house of God every week and get along with everybody, but my only vision is for me. I have a vision for my future, my career, my finances, my goals, my talents, my fun, my pleasure, my, 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 me, me, me. When my primary vision is my life, I will always be in contradiction with God's vision. For the church. Well, that was better than you clapped, but Matthew 16 and 25 says, For whosoever will lose his life, excuse me, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. 
For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? The reason people perish for lack of vision is because they begin to live for themselves instead of living for the kingdom. Our opening text perfectly paints a picture of a people without vision. The people were neglecting God's house in every aspect. The people were unfaithful. How long will you stay in your sealed houses? They just wanted to stay home and be left alone. They lost vision for God's house. They were frustrated in their own house. Pleasure and self and self-sustenance became the preeminent priority in their life. Greater faith, it appears to me that this church, hear me because I'm pastoring you right now. It appears to me that this church has been stuck for a little while. And it happened before your previous pastor resigned. And I know I'm online right now. I read through some of the minutes from this church's business meetings that dated years ago. And there was a previous pastor expressing to the church his frustration about non-commitment. He described a lack of commitment in attendance and finance and in fervor. I wasn't here then, and I can't speak to the reasons why that might have been the case back then. But what I can tell you is this. It stops now. And today, we start a new course. Today, we unite behind a new vision. Today, we lose our life so he can save it. Today, we abandon any lack of commitment. Greater faith, apostolic church, I declare to you in Jesus' name that it is time to build the house. We will build this house with vision. We will build this house with revival. We will build this house with infrastructure. We will build this house in five-fold ministry. We will build this house in his favor. We will build this house with sacrifice. We will build this house with labor. We will build this house with selflessness. We will build this house in faithful attendance. We will We'll build this house in finance, uh, and we will build this house in faith, uh, in Jesus' name. That's the only way to build the house. Psalms 127 says, except the Lord build the house. They labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city. The watchman waketh but in vain. We will build this house biblically. Jesus is our architect. He is our master builder. He is the chief cornerstone. And we will build his house the way he wants it. Not the way we prefer it. We will build it according to his word. I'm almost finished. Habakkuk chapter 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Mm -hmm. Habakkuk said, make it plain. There's timing involved in the vision. It will come. And then all of a sudden he says, almost seems out of context. He says, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. You know what he was talking about right there? He's talking about when there's resistance in your heart against the vision, your soul is lifted up. He took 
wrapped it up right in there when he was talking about vision. Uh, he said, you better watch out uh, because when you feel something uh, be bristled in your spirit that says, well, I'm not so sure about that. Uh, I don't think I like that. Uh, he said, your soul is upright in you uh, and you need to be careful uh, because the vision shall come to pass. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you, if you would, to please hear. Uh, I'm going to present something to you this morning. And what I'd like to do before I get into it, this will only take a few minutes, but I would like for us to pray one more time. Would you stand? Dear Lord Jesus, this morning, God, you have released vision, faith, and expectation in this house. Lord, this is your service. Lord, we're working on your agenda right now. God, and I pray this morning that the gift of faith would be released in this room. Lord God, that there would be a unified vision in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, church, would you lift your voice with me for just the next 30 seconds uh, and begin to magnify God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Mm. Praise God. You may be seated. A few weeks ago, the Lord began to deal with me about things that needed to happen here around greater faith. Began to deal with me about an infrastructure plan. And things that needed to happen in the building and in different ministries. And the Lord laid it upon my heart to do what I'm calling God's house someday. Because it's time to build the house. Would you please give me slide number one. Hours late and... I've gone longer than I intended to preach. But there's a lot of things that we want to do here at Greater Faith that need to be done. And I've spent a lot of time the last few weeks meeting professionals here, meeting people here, meeting with the board, and coming up with a long list of things that need done. Line item number one is miscellaneous repairs, replacements, and upgrades. Is this okay? Everybody got? All right. And I felt it was important for you to know what was on here. I've broken this into categories, but I'm going to quickly read to you the things that are on here. And item number one is drywall and paint repairs, sanctuary ceiling repair, youth basement, uh, youth room in the basement needs to be repaired, the bottom of the stairs. Uh, we need to build an access panel for the electrical box. Uh, we need to paint the basement steps, fix the light in between the two rooms in the, in the basement that doesn't work, properly install carpet in the kids' rooms, build a half wall with cabinet doors and access in the kids' room for storage. We need a front new patio light fixture, fix the hole in the back patio, new gutters and downspouts on this patio back here, new handrail on the front steps, remove the carpet, Wash and paint the front steps, the steeple. Uh, we need photo cell sensors put on our parking lot lights. We need to add more exterior lighting and security lighting in the foyer and outside. Add an alarm system. Um, there's storage and organization needs that we have. Uh, we need to uninstall and then properly install the heater and the electric for the baptismal. It's very dangerous the way that it is right now. Don't get too scared. <laughs> it'll, it, it'll shock the Holy Ghost right into you. Hallelujah. Amen. Man, I lost my whole train of thought with that. I remember she was sitting here. She wants to be baptized. I'm like, she probably didn't want to hear that. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, there's major... Um, Forgive me. 
We're going to replace all of the bathroom stalls with commercial power-coated steel bathroom stalls. This room right here is going to become a nursery. We have several ladies that come to church with babies, and we don't have a nursery for them to go. So this office here will become a nursery. Um, new baptistry robes, towels. Redo this baptistry changing room and this finance office over here. Um, all of this stuff. And then we need to expand our sound booth back here. And if space allows, lift it. We have some plumbing issues in the bathroom that we need to take care of. A lot of things. It's a long list, and I, I'm sorry, I don't want to. But that first line item there is $36,000. And then we have what's called priority issues. We have electrical repairs that need to be done. We have a fire door downstairs that has to be completely replaced. It's very difficult to open if there was ever a fire in the basement. The kids uh, would struggle to get out. And it's crazy because I walked in today and there's a letter on the desk from the fire mar marshal saying he wants to come inspect the building. So, so if you have no other reason to give, think about that. Van repairs and maintenance. All of our administrative space is going to be moved into this first house right here that's going to become the administration house. And that's where... My office will be, that's where the finance office will be. There will be a secretary placed there. And also, we are going to do that kitchen over there because this church needs a kitchen. Amen. We have some repairs to do on the rental house. A new sign out here. We brought in a consultant to help us. Me and Brother Luke met with a consultant for our audio, our video, and lighting. And we, we desperately need new equipment uh, for our audio, video, and lighting. We need to seal and stripe the parking lot. Um, give me that next slide of the pavilion. That shed we have over there is rotting and falling apart. We want to tear that shed down. We need to put this over here, which will give us safe, dry storage and will give us a covered pavilion over in this gravel area for us to do fellowship outside. Mm. Amen. Mm. And then we have debt reduction. I want to try to pay down some of this mortgage. And then, this is something, I don't know if you're used to this, if, if this has ever been presented before, but one of the line items on there was a camp door. When you're part of a district, and you are blessed by district events in other locations, the whole district partakes in taking care of the campground. So they were replacing all the campground doors out there. It was uh, close to $250,000. And I committed greater faith to purchase one door out there for $2,200. So the total was $150,600. And that's not a lot of money. Mm. You needed to hear somebody say that. That's not a lot of money. I'm pushing. I can feel the push in this room right now. But I'm not scared. Because God is bigger. And God is greater. Mm, hallelujah. 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 Brother Jerry, Brother Dwight, if you would, I want you to come and grab these cards right here. And I want you to pass these out to everybody. You can get additional help if you want, so it goes a little faster. You can give me slide number three. What I'm asking you to do today is this. It's twofold. One side is for the God's House Project offering that we are receiving today. And I, I felt led of the Holy Ghost to share with you today 
what our family is going to do. Because you need to know that your pastor is invested. The first line is a sacrificial offering. And that's something you plan to give before this month is over. It's a one-time lump sum offering. And the next line is your pledge. It's a six-month pledge that I'm going to give this amount per month for six months to contribute to the God's house offering. If you add those two together, your sacrificial offering and your monthly pledge, it'll give you the line item on the third line there, which is your total that you are committing to the God's house project. Our family has a small savings account. I think right now it's got $5,800 in it. And we are giving $5,000 in the sacrificial offering. And then we are giving another $5,000 over six months before the year is over. So our family is giving $10,000 to this offering. Because I believe with my whole heart everything that I'm preaching to you today. I'm invested in Iron Ten. I'm invested in what God is doing in this house. And what we're going to do before you begin to fill it out is we're going to pray. And I want you to look at the back side. Give me the next slide. We need to understand that participating in the God's house offering is not a substitute for receiving tithes and offerings. I'm still going to pay my tithe. I expect you to still pay your tithe. And here's what I don't want. If you do not currently, faithfully return tithes and offerings, I'm not asking you to participate in the God's house offering. What I'm asking you to do is to commit to begin to faithfully return the tithe and the giving of offerings. Because, you know what, this, this God's house project, this is optional. It's necessary, and you should, but you're not going to not go to heaven because you didn't give in the God's house offering. But the returning of the tithes and the giving of offerings, that's something God expects. That's why Malachi says, will you rob God? He equated not returning tithes and offerings to robbing the Lord because you are not returning what God has blessed you with already. So if you're not a tither, today would be a great day to start. If you have not given in offerings, today would be a great day to start. And so there's a backside there for you to write your name and commit. And I want you to know something, that there isn't one person in this church that is going to see these cards except for me. There's not an usher, a board member, anybody in there. there, Nobody is going to see these cards except for me. This is between you, God, and the pastor. Would you stand with me? Jesus today, Lord, this is your house. Lord, and you are doing a great work here at Ireton. Lord, you have called these people for such a time as this. Lord, you knew who would be here today and who wouldn't be here. Oh, God, and I'm asking you right now, Lord, to move upon every person under the sound of my voice this morning, whether they're online or in the building, or that you would release an inspiration of giving upon their heart today. God, that you would begin to speak to them right now. Lord, that you would give them ears to hear what you are saying. Lord, I pray you would speak to every person in this room about a sacrificial offer, about a monthly pledge, Lord, and about the faithful return of tithes and offerings. Once the Lord has spoken to your heart today, I want you to get a pen and I want you to begin to fill out that card. Our 
keyboard player. She's going to continue to play as all of us take the next few moments and begin to fill out our cards. And when you're done, I want you to come and place it in this basket up here, if you would. Once you have your card filled out, I want you to just come and place it in this basket right up here.
as you continue to fill those out, I just I want to say I, I want you to do what the Lord tells you to do. I don't want you to do more than that, and I don't want you to do less than that. I want you to get your number from the Lord today, right? Because the Lord's the one that knows who's given what, and He knows what we need, and He's the one that's adding it all up. He knows where it's coming from. So you don't need to feel pressure from me to do a certain amount or to, to, to you know, for it to be whatever. I want you to talk to the Lord today and let the Lord put a number on your heart. And I would encourage you, whatever He speaks to you, do that. Don't do less and don't do more. I don't want you to do more than what God tells you. Do what the Lord speaks to you today. this morning. If you're still working, please continue to do so. I know we've gone kind of late here today, so I'm just trying to be mindful of the time. I want to thank all of you for being here. I want to thank all of you for participating in the God's House Project. I believe that when we honor the Lord's house, that God blesses us for it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I know we have some people online that are going to be giving, some people that are not here that will be filling in a card, a few people that are going home to talk to their spouse about what they can do before they turn in this card. And so my intention is to announce the results of this God's House project on Father's Day, on Father's Day. So some of you have a little bit of time to uh, handle your business or whatever you need to do before you turn that in. That's totally fine. But if the Lord gave you a number today, I would encourage you not to wait. Because if he gave you a number today, I would encourage you to write that down and turn that pledge in today. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Let's pray together. I'm going to pray in dismissal today. And uh, let you get out of here. And I'm just, I just want you to know I'm so blessed and I'm so thankful for each and every one of you. And I believe in what God is doing here. Amen. How many of you are excited about the future? Praise God. Let's pray together. Jesus, we love you. Oh, we're so thankful for every believer that is coming to this place today. We're thankful for the work that you are doing here at Greater Faith in this city, in this region. Thank you, Lord, for the partnership of faith with like-minded believers, Lord, that are near here as we join together, Lord, to take this area for you. Lord, we love you. We glorify you. We magnify you today. I pray that you would bless every gift and every giver. Continue to speak to us as we leave this house. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. I will leave this basket up here until I leave today for anybody who's still working and needs to turn in a card.